Welcome back to my channel and welcome to a video series I have not reawoken in a really long time. Today's video is going to be a would you rather video and if you happen to be new to this video series I will very quickly explain it to you. What this video really is is that thing I don't know if you do it in the morning but a lot of us have said we do it. I definitely do it where you sit down in the morning at your beauty desk at your sink, wherever you do your makeup, and you have all this makeup from BoxyCharm, right? Or all this makeup from shopping and BoxyCharm and Ipsy or all the ways you get makeup and you're like, what do I feel like putting on my face today? What do I feel like playing with? Where do I feel like going with today's look? It's like we get to start our day off with an adventure with our faces. So this video came to me one morning when I was getting ready and I was going, what do I want to use today? I have so many options. So I'm noticing certain things with BoxyCharm, especially since, <laughs> <sighs> since this merge with Ipsy, we've definitely noticed we're seeing a ton of skincare. So I've also been noticing we're getting duplicates of similar type products and I'm starting to see where my hand is going in the morning. What gets me excited to use it and what things am I like, eh, I don't wanna really use that today. Do you know what I mean? So even though I feel like over the past seven months to a year now, we have been getting things that really excite us and some things that don't, I'm kinda seeing where my hand goes in the morning. So this video is going to be a would you rather video. And this is just my personal thoughts. Feel free to play along down below or add in your write-ins if you got something different than me about what you are currently reaching for. And I will tell you today, if my face looks a little like, hmm, things aren't exactly the same. It's because they're absolutely not. Today, I did half my face with one set of makeup and the other half of my face with another set of makeup just to add in a little bit of fun with today's look. So it may not be totally matchy matchy, but that is okay because I was experimenting to see, hmm, why am I reaching for one more than the other? Or it may help me make the decision of which one I actually would rather because some things I'm still not totally sold on either product. So I'm just kind of like forcing myself to see where is my makeup heart lying at the moment? So if you happen to be new here, hi, my name is Nicole. I do a ton of BoxyCharm makeup videos, but I also do a lot of spinoff videos, drugstore, what's new in the market, all kinds of fun things. So I also have the gift of gab. So grab your tea, grab your snack, grab your water, get comfy, and let's get ready to dive into some would you rathers together. Cheers. Today's beverage for me is an unsweet tea. As you can tell, I've already been diving into it. What are you having? Tell us below. I love to hear what you're snacking on, what you're having as a beverage. You guys have some really good treats and I kind of want you to invite me over because I want to have some treats with you. This morning I was actually going to start my face with some skincare because as we know, we have gotten a plethora of skincare from Boxy slash Ipsy over the past seven months but I was kind of leaning into more of the stuff I currently have. And then I stopped myself and said, wait a minute, Nicole, what you should do, what you should do is, well, fix your hat a little bit because it's looking a little crooked and yet yeah, still just chilling here because it's still summer. Let's still play around with it. But you should try to compare skincare items that are similar-ish. What is their end effect? Because honestly, what I have been using a ton of are two things that I've been just recently getting and trying. One of them is the Dermalect Serum. This is amazing. It's got some nice retinols in it, but it makes your skin like baby soft. It is amazing. I love it, love it, love it. But I realized with the other product I was using, this Skin Regimen AHA Booster. Sorry, it's just an HA booster. Um, this is for plumping your skin. And I was like, wait. I think I have something else in my collection that actually did that as well. And it wasn't $115 like this little booger. So this is still on my um, chest here and neck because we still got to take care of our skin in other ways, ladies. Take care of yourself, treat yourself. But I decided this morning I was going to compare this very pricey product that we recently got, or at least I did. Some of you may have gotten it as well to something that I also got from BoxyCharm. I can't remember though if this was in a box or an add-on or a pop-up, but it's definitely from BoxyCharm. So in my mind, it's still applied. This is the Glow Recipe Plump Plum Plumping Hyaluronic Serum. So this morning, I have these two on my face, one on one side, one on the other. And this is actually a very minimal look I've got going today because I don't even have concealers on. I only 
really have on mostly these products that I'm going to talk about today. I did have to add a couple extra powders for color matching, but we'll get there when we get there so I can better explain it for you. But as far as the skincare goes, this half here is this glow recipe that I've told you guys. I love this brand. Anytime I see this in an add-on, a pop-up, a box coming our way, I get so excited. This product, though, has definitely surprised me since receiving it because I've been utilizing it on my skin at least three days a week, and I do notice great benefits with this. It's got some amazing ingredients in it. It is from a brand called Comfort Zone. You kind of have to dig on the back label to find it, but it is pricey. But I've told you guys in recent videos, I like it. So this morning when I was applying my skincare, I was trying to decide how are things applying? How are things looking later? How did they play with makeup? Or better not play with makeup because I don't want to mess up my makeup if you're the skincare beforehand, you know what I mean? I will say this glow recipe had a slight advantage because I already had it, so it was chilling in my fridge down below. Whereas this has been sitting on top of my desk because I've been utilizing it more for an upcoming honestly, review with BoxyCharm. I'm always trying the products to give you updated reviews on. So I've been using this far more frequently and I hadn't used this in a while. So I was like, let's pull this out to see how she does. But I forgot, first of all, packaging is always going to come into play because ease of use is amazing. And this pump on this baby is superior. I also really like the thickness of this product when it goes on to my face because it's much easier to control to apply. This guy is great too. However, as far as applying goes, it's a little more difficult because it's a dropper. It's a little bit more difficult. The thing about skincare too is that you kind of have to give it a longer amount of time. So I feel like I've given this some time in the past and I'm using this currently. So I feel like I can't give it maybe a direct would you rather comparison a hundred percent, but I think they're both great disclaimer. And I need to make this disclaimer before I get into which one I'm rathering for any of these categories. If something in here is absolutely a favorite for you, that is amazing. If you would rather something more than what I have, awesome. Everyone's skin is different. Everyone's makeup preferences are different. It's all subjective. This is just kind of for fun and letting you know where my head is at currently. Some things it's going to be because of texture. Some of it's going to be because of coloration, things like that. But as far as these two products go, I do need to say, I think this one has impressed me a bit more because I find myself reaching for it over and over again. And usually if that happens to me, it's because I'm noticing things, even if I can't always articulate it, I'm seeing a difference in a positive way. This is still great. Do not get me wrong. This is a really nice product. I love Glow Recipe and I love so many of my products that I have from Glow Recipe. But this one I found I wasn't reaching for it as consistently. I very quickly kind of moved away from this product onto other things even before I got this. But this one keeps pulling me back in. This one is the one that I keep noticing, oh, my skin looks brighter or, oh, there's a little bit less texture on my face. Things are still looking smooth and clear. So honestly, based off what I continue to reach for over and over, this guy for me is what I am rathering. Even though, like I said, this is a great product. And they both did pretty well this morning when I was applying them. They both felt great. History will tell you what is repeating itself. What am I loving? I've reached for this far more than I have this. Even though I've just gotten this. I know that sounds weird. Some of you may be confused. Even when I got this, I was still like, oh, well, what else do I have? And then this quickly kind of fell off my radar. This is still lasting for me as far as like, oh, I want to pull this out. I'm really curious about the whole plumping thing, though, because I don't know if I've ever noticed like plumping. I'm going to have to pay more attention to that part of the claims because they both say they're hydro plumping concentrates. One of the next things that I put on my face after I let the skin care sit, always give your stuff a little more time before you move on to the next step, especially when we're talking about skincare and the more liquid type products. You want them to really soak in. I next went into primers. I have gotten back to back to back primers, it seems like, from BoxyCharm. And now I've had some of these for a while, so I wanted to pull them back out and kind of do a head to head. I got this idea also with these products because when I was doing my quarterly BoxyCharm review that I recently posted, that if you did miss that, grab your two teas, grab your two, two snacks, and it'll be linked above for you. That's a long one, but I did end up having to kind of do something similar with these products because 
we got so many primers. I'm kind of like, spread it out, Boxy. Spread it out. We got a whole year to go. But in the same month, I received a Too Faced Hangover Primer and the First Aid Beauty Hello Fab Coconut Primer here. And then I had also, I think either that month or later, in that same quarter though, got the Fenty one and then I started using the Fenty one more. A lot of primers were going around in that one quarter. I mean, it was a little excessive considering we're not getting much makeup. So I feel like I had paid too much attention to the Fenty. I wanted to pull these out. So yesterday and today I've done a half, half face wear test, trial run to see how my makeup wore and how it felt applying all of those things that go into the full experience of a primer. Now, I know some people don't believe in primers. For me personally, if I have a really good primer, it can absolutely change the lastability of my makeup, for sure. I felt like putting this on today, the Hangover Too Faced Primer, I felt like I was doing something really smoothing for my skin. The Even the application with just my fingertips kind of pressing it in, it felt very much like I was setting up like this glass-like look because this formula felt like I was just like ironing out the face. I was definitely giving it maybe a touch of hydration, but more just the smooth, slick, feel. I loved how it just was like, okay, this is going to make my pores look glass-like. They're going to disappear with this once I put more things on my face is where my brain was going as I was just applying this product. Now the Hello Fab Coconut Skin Smoothie Priming Moisturizer. This to me had a much more similar feel and application as when I'm applying SPF in the morning. I do love my Murad SPF moisturizer. That was something I had put on earlier in the day and then took a shower after some cardio and then put this on. Um, it felt very similar to putting on that Murad SPF moisturizer. It just kind of felt like that. I wasn't getting the slick smoothing texture feel that I did with this product. It just felt like I was putting on an SPF, but I wasn't going to be mad about that. I was like, this could still set my makeup up for success. Give me some hydration. Let's see. I am oily though, so I don't want too much hydration. I really, really don't. Yesterday I was also trying these behind the scenes, havesy havesy on each side of my face. And I went out to run some errands. And of course I had to pull down the truth teller mirror. That is that car mirror that shows all the pores, every possible flaw that you have. If you need to know the truth, pull down that mirror and take a look. See, cause it can be a little traumatizing, but it tells you what's up. Both sides of my face looked very similar as far as the pores went. Cause I was trying to pay attention to that. Cause like I said, this one felt like glass. I was really curious. Whereas this one, I feel like it still was doing a good job. Now today, adding in a bit more makeup, because yesterday was much more light day. Today still feels like a very light day for makeup for me, just so you know, because I don't even have concealer on. I don't even have a real foundation on, believe it or not. It's just the products really I'm talking about in this video. And I feel like each side looks really nice and put together. Yes, I've got some bronzers on, and yes, I've got some powders on. I'm going to get into those here in a minute. And one other thing, but I can tell you, I think they look great. They've held up well. This side of my face though, if I'm just touching my face, feels more glass-like. This side does feel a little bit more like poreless. It feels slicker in a good way. Like I just have no texture to my skin kind of vibe. Whereas this side over here still feels nice and soft from the skincare, but it doesn't have that glass-like poreless feel. Does that make sense? I'm looking up close now in a little mirror and I just think it looks so similar as far as just the base, like my skin goes under the makeup and I'm not wearing a ton of makeup. So I'm pretty pleased with how these are both applying, but if I did have to pick one and the one that I do find myself just kind of like reaching for a touch more here and there is the Too Faced Hangover. And I did not think that when I first got these two, I thought for sure this was going to be my standout winner. This one is the one I think I just noticed my skin feels like glass. It's like set up for so much success throughout the day that when I am wearing some of my favorite foundations, that it makes my skin look even better than it looks today. Because I still do see some pores. I still do see some things. But like I said, I'm not even wearing a foundation today. So 
it's very exciting to see that my skin can look this good on a no foundation, no concealer day. You know what I mean? Both sides, both sides. But this side has just that advantage of being that much smoother, that much less texture feeling. And I think my makeup may have held up a little bit better on this side. If I do think of if I do think to add that in, like look at the end of today, I will definitely leave you some comments in the description box below. So we shall see at the end of the day, but right now both sides look great. This one just has a little bit more of an advantage and I just loved how it felt. I felt like I was prepping my makeup, whereas this just felt like more skincare and I got enough of that. You know what I mean? Next in this would you rather category that I was really excited to retest were some tinted moisturizers. And yeah, I know this has some moisture in it too, but apparently I am an oily skin girl in the hot Florida humid weather that is a masochist because I really wanted to see how I could put these two products head to head because tinted moisturizers are the thing of the moment, aren't they? I mean, I just keep hearing all these brands come up with these and there are two in my collection that there's one that you know I love, but there's one that I hadn't given, I feel like enough attention to. So let's talk about the Studio Makeup Formulated with Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer compared to the pure four in one. You know I love this. This is the second one I'm getting in a darker shade. Although if I were a little bit smarter this morning when I was putting all of these on, I would have gone with the lighter shade that I have of this because this is pretty light. I had never done them really side to side, so I wasn't totally sure. But this one here is what I have on the left side of my face. And this one here is on the right. And well, my right, your left. When I was applying these this morning, I coated it up because I already knew I was going to need some coverage. I wasn't going to be doing a foundation or a concealer, so I needed to layer. And I already knew with the pure four in one, the best way to apply this is to layer this baby up and you don't need a foundation. That was my raving review about this. You didn't need it. It was going to make your skin look great. It was going to be that no makeup makeup day and it was going to look so flawless. So I knew I loved this, knew it. Then I was like, I, this was coming in as the underdog. I will be a hundred percent with you. This was the one that I was like, all right, girl, we're going to give you the old college try because I've heard a few people in my comments say you're nice, but I'm, I'm, I'm putting you up against my fave right now. My fave that I just kept going for, but I didn't want to like set this up for failure either. I wanted to give it the old college try. This is the only stuff on my face today. That's not the skincare or the primers. These are my foundations and concealers essentially today. This side here is the studio makeup. Mm -hmm. It may be a little bit lighter because the coloration on this is significantly lighter, which you'll see in the B-roll footage, but I'll also just do a little swatch here for you. I kind of wish I would have remembered to do my lighter shade, but I'd have to have found it too, but it's very light, but it was masking some of my freckles. Here's the thing about my freckles. I know a lot of people are into that faux freckle look right now. I feel like I have the kind of freckles though that they're not the cutesy ones. They're the kind that can maybe make you look older. I don't know. It's just something that I always, if I'm covering them, I want them mostly covered. And over here is the pure in the shade MN, I think is what it is. MN3 to be exact. So this has a lot more coverage and I noticed as I was applying them, I think the coloration absolutely supported it looking like a healthier glow because it's more my skin color. And I did do one coat first just to kind of see how does the application, how much coverage can you get from one application? I wanted to see side by side. I used a brush on both sides because I wanted to give it the best chance it could to kind of really get into my skin and not get absorbed into a sponge. And with that one, I could immediately tell I was really leaning more like I thought I would towards the pure, but then I went into the second round and with the second round, even though I know the other one was a lot lighter, I needed to pull coloration aside. I was looking at how much were my freckles covered, how much, um, discoloration under the eyes. Could you not see versus what you could see? I was really kind of investigating it. And while I think it did pretty well, I think if I would have got this in a darker color, I may have liked it even more but the pure still was superior as far as giving you a good coverage that doesn't make you look too oily. Doesn't make me look too shiny. Now keep in mind, I have on a ton of powders now that I'm going to talk about here in just a little bit. So that is probably helping to combat some of the extra dew, all the extra shine that this oily skin girl can get in the summer. 
but I was more impressed with this than I thought I would. Now, I will say my official would you rather, I would rather the pure four in one because of the thickness of this product, the consistency, the finish. I think the finish is what really does me in because when I could just get really, really technical with it, when I really wanted to scrutinize it in my mirror up close, these did not look bad. Like this one actually was giving this more of a run for the money than I thought it would. Um, but, 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 but the finish on this was glorious. It made my skin look so healthy, so pretty, even despite the nicer tone on this one, this did better than I thought. So I am going to hang on to this and keep trying it for this winter when I don't have as much of a tan maybe and see how she does. But I wasn't nearly as like, this wasn't a sweep. Like I really thought this one was just gonna take it hands down. I was actually surprised with how much coverage I was able to achieve with this. So I think if I would have gotten a better color, I'd like it even more. But the official winner of the Tinted Moisturizer round is definitely the Pure 4-in-1 Tinted Moisturizer. Next, since I was not going to be putting on any concealers or foundation and still filming and putting myself on the internet, I needed some powder right? I actually don't feel like I have a favorite out of these two. I don't even know if I know in this moment what I'm going to say is going to be the winner for this category because neither one of these powders have been superior over the other in my mind yet. I'm going to have to get really technical with this. So the next powders that I'm trying are the Beauty Bakery Flower Setting Powder. This one's in the shade Oat Translucent. That is on this side of my face. And Anastasia Beverly Hills Loose Setting Powder, the translucent powder, is on this side of my face. I found when I got these, again, like in the same darn month, or at least in the same darn quarter, I was kind of like having a struggle. Like this one kind of got hidden because it was a nice little bite size that would fit into my drawers. Whereas this guy is big and bulky, doesn't fit in my drawers or the space where I keep my powders. So she ended up sitting on my desk. So I ended up reaching for this one more. But then when I started discovering some of the stuff I already had in my collection again, after reviewing these, I was like, both of them kind of fell off my radar. So I don't feel like either one of them has an edge in this category. Neither one of them is like already speaking to me in a way. And silly me wore a black tank top. So if you see any white flecks all over it, it's cause you know, I put on powder today with a black tank top on. I don't know what I was thinking. All right, I'm even getting up really close to my skin right now, just trying to see up close how I feel about what has been pressed into my skin versus the other, because this is just like more like the wear review. This is like me trying to figure out which one would I rather based off how things are looking, how the finish goes. They look pretty similar actually. I may want to do a redo of this round in a couple more weeks if I can dedicate more time to these powders because this is just like in this moment. What am I thinking? What am I feeling like? Because neither of them have like really become like a sideshow favorite. Um, but my skin is looking so similar. Like I am looking in a mirror really close up at my pores, at my face, and it is looking super duper similar. If I want to get super duper picky, this side of my nose is having a bit more creasing then this side, because this is like where the oily skin girl trouble spots can begin in the day, like right here. And this side of my nose has definitely got some creasing and this one has a much more minimal crease. Nothing I couldn't like get rid of with a brush or a sponge, but you know, I'm getting technical right now. I also like, what I didn't like about this is because I'm always worried about it looking too white, but it really does press really well into the skin and goes, does a really good job of setting under the eyes, the Anastasia powder. I feel like I haven't tried the Beauty Bakery flower setting powder as much. Some of these names, man, but this is the kind of powder I generally do like because it's a little bit more finely milled and it can get into my nooks and crannies to make everything look a little bit more smooth texture wise. But I feel like the few times that I was putting them, like if I had the option, I was going more for that one, but it's not, it's so rare that I've reached for either of these. You know what though? I think I am going to say the Anastasia powder, even though I know this one has a little bit more creasing on the nose here on the part of my face where stuff can either start looking really pory or breaking apart. It looks a lot smoother here and this side doesn't, it has a bit more texture to it. Maybe a little bit more lining underneath the eyes than this side does. 
I think I would have to say as of this moment, and I may do another round of this in the future, you just never know. I'm going to say I would rather the Anastasia Loose Translucent Powder. You also get a ton. Not that that is factoring in for me, honestly, at the moment. It's more how it, the finish is looking on my face. I need all the support and the smoothing capabilities I can get, and I think this did it just a bit better than the flower. But, like I said, I'm not married to that answer. Maybe you'll see a redo soon when maybe I'm when the seasons change and it's not so humid here. But right now, that's what I'm going to say I'm rathering. Okay, so because we had such a difference on the face with the face colors, I did have to use a little bit of powders just to kind of try to even things out. And I already knew that my Fenty Pro Filter Powder is amazing at just kind of making everything lightly warmed up but not bronzing because that's what I put on before I went into the next very hard category of bronzers. You probably guessed this was going to be in here because I kept using this mirror, but it's a really big mirror. It helps out. Over here, I have the Anastasia bronzer, and I specifically did this bronzer on this side because it is in the shade Rich Ember. And the Pure 4-in-1 was on this side, which was a darker moisturizer, tinted moisturizer for my face. And I thought trying to go in with the darker one with the lighter shade on the side of the face was just going to be too dramatic and it could pull negatively for the product. And that wasn't the goal of this video. It's just more to see which product do I like better. So I'm setting up them all up for success was the plan here. So I used this on this side of the face today and the Iconic London in the shade Light Bronze on this side of my face today. It's around the perimeter, on the face, on the nose, on the jawline. I was really wanting to see which product I was enjoying to use more between application, how things spread, how they blended, how they last and how they've worn. So I had an idea going into this video, what I might think but then I wanted to put them head to head to see. This isn't a dupes video, and I know it may be th thinking that way because I applied each half to my face or whatever, but I'm kind of impressed with how well things did end up blending down to match if I needed them to. So that kind of tells you even this really dark bronzer that seems much darker than this one, especially in swatched and on the face, it is still able to blend down, which is really nice because we were, a lot of us were concerned when we were getting our bronzers or seeing our bronzer swatched for the Anastasia palette. Um, cause this sucker can look real dark, right? Like you got to really blend her down. Oh, I forgot there's moisturizer on this hand. So it may look a little funny, but she can get really dark. So I needed to know if I could blend her down. And this bronzer, I very, very recently in my most recent BoxyCharm video, let you know, really surprised me because she actually is a nice bronzer that spreads and blends and Iconic London and I, we don't always get along. I don't feel like I get a ton of things from Iconic London that really like stand out to me in a positive way. And there's also Butter London, and then there's also, there's so many Londons out there that confuse me, but there's also Ciate London, and I got Ciate London and Iconic London confused in my last video. So many Londons. But as you can see, yeah, there's some moisturizer on my hand, so please forgive that. But this kind of gives you an idea that they really can look similar. Using clean brushes this morning, I went in with each of these, trying to see which one I would like more. And the one that I found I liked more which is, I think, just a change of makeup for me and maybe how my preferences have changed through the years. I've actually found I liked the Iconic London a bit better than the Anastasia, which is kind of sad because I was really thinking and hoping I would like this bronzer a lot more than I do. But one, I'm finding I'm not pulling this out nearly as much as I thought I would. And then I thought in my head, well, is it because you just got another bronzer because BoxyCharm is giving us so many similar products back to back to back? But then I realized what I enjoy about this is the formula that you can build up to. You can like start with a light tanny look and then kind of like build on it. You can make that warm up glow look great. These are both matte. So these were great to actually get to compare. So they're not like glowy in a shimmery way, but it's more that body bronze, gorgeous goddess look, you know, that we're still going for in August because it is still summertime. And as much as I like this, and I loved that it would blend down because at first I was concerned I applied too much of this. I loved how it blended down without looking muddy, without pulling on itself, without making it look caked up or making my makeup beneath it look bare because we keep in mind, again, I don't have foundation on. So all I have on is a tinted moisturizer underneath this. So that actually speaks pretty highly of it now that I'm wording it like that and thinking of it that way because this isn't foundation. This is a tinted moisturizer that I was laying it down on. 
it didn't move that product. So that is a really good endorsement for this formula, but I still find that lately this has been a really great tone for my skin, but also I can build it. I can layer on itself and still buff it down if I need to, whereas this sucker goes in pretty dark pretty quickly and I need to be very mindful with how I use it. And it's August, it's summer, it's when I should be wanting it the most. It's not that it's bad. Again, none of this, none of this is, this isn't a declutter video, please don't worry. I will still be enjoying these. And again, preferences change all the time through the seasons. This is just what I was feeling at the moment. And that is, I am rathering the iconic London. I'm still so surprised but maybe happily surprised, you know? And now one of the last categories I have to get into is something that I have talked about before a few different times in a few different videos. Let's talk about eyeshadow palettes. I have gotten a really bougie eyeshadow palette from BoxyCharm a while back. Didn't like it at first. Didn't like it at all. Thought the formula was crap. Didn't understand how this palette was $80. Eight, zero. Based off that price, you may have already guessed, it is the Viseart palette. I asked for the Matte Neutral Nudes palette. This is one, there was another one that was going around that had more pinks and blues in it, but I thought to set myself up for success, the one I would probably like to reach for the most is this matte one. And it took me a while to warm up to her. I didn't know if I was gonna like her ever, to be honest. And I really found through this summer when I was doing more natural makeup, um, more nude eye looks, this was something I was really learning how to enjoy to like. The formula is a little different, a little bit more, um, you gotta build it, but it's still got a lot of fluff to it. It took some time, but I really enjoyed it. But then we got this transition palette from Dominique Cosmetics that is like a big version dupe for it almost with a lot of options. I have been reaching for both of these a ton this summer. So when I was having this idea of this, would you rather, which one would I be rathering? I was like, oh, this one's gonna be too hard. This palette is this eye. This palette is this eye. So I really took my time kind of trying to make the match, obviously. This isn't a dupes video, like I said before, but I was trying to get, you know, set it all up for success as best I could and try to see which formula did I enjoy working with more? Which one gave me more? Well, this one will clearly have more options. Which one was I really just rathering in the overall arching aspect of the eyeshadow palettes? Physically, just looking at the physicality of each product. This palette, much bigger, so she doesn't exactly fit in some of the best spaces for me, whereas this Vizier palette is much smaller, has really great quality shadows, and is much easier to store in my tiny little beauty space. This baby here has a stunning mirror, stunning, stunning mirror that I use a lot, and this one clearly does not. That helpful. Also kind of looks like cheap packaging for a being 80 bucks, right? Right, a little bit. Then of course we have five pans across, three down. So you have a lot more options to play with and more color story to play with here. Whereas this one is four across, three down. Really great color story for me because I love these. They're a bit more cooler toned though. So it was really hard to match the warmer tones from this palette, but it's a cooler toned palette. So that's just kind of like it's jam, it's five. It's not what I'm holding against it, just listing the descriptors here. These pans are much larger. These pans are more square and smaller. And I actually have enjoyed both of them. And I've actually said, I feel like that these are kind of not 100% dupes, but really darn close to each other. That if you didn't have one, you could do with the other and not need the other one. So this one was gonna be really, really hard. And I still, I'm elongating this because I don't know the answer, honestly, off the top of my head. Because I think they're both quality. I think these both have their moments. And there are times I've reached for one way more than the other or just used one versus the other. But after playing with them now for two days in a row, kind of doing one eye at a time, just trying to see which one I would prefer because I even had identical brushes, literally identical brushes. This is the BMX 430 crease brush. I washed these after yesterday's use to try them again today, even though the tips don't look identical at the moment. That's silly. It's just from drying. I used identical brushes just to make sure or at least the styles too, to set them up for the most success I could. Oh, I almost don't want to say with this because I feel like it's, I'm going to change my mind. In this moment, oh, I feel like I'm going to change my mind because I almost don't want to give an answer because there are some days I just prefer this. And then there are some days I just prefer this. Mm. 
But I have to say what I'm rathering the most is this palette, the Dominique Cosmetics Transitions palette. It's got a lot more features to it, like bells and whistles as far as a palette goes. It sounds weird to say, but it's true. This has a mirror. The other one doesn't. It's got a lot of options, a lot of pan to it. Even though like sometimes the size works against it for me personally, I find that these shadows maybe apply for the way I like to do makeup just a bit easier. They both require buildup in my mind. They both require some layering and some work to them. You got to take your time. This one though is a bit more time consuming than this one. And I feel like with this palette, I have obviously way more options. I can do multiple more eye looks, whereas this one I kind of stick to two or three, but these are both great. They're both amazing, but I do, I think at this moment, oh man, in like a month, I'm going to be like, I'm doing this over and I'm saying this one. But in this moment, I have to say, this is the palette that I would say I am rathering out of these two. Okay, this was really fun to do and I haven't done this type of video in a while, my Would You Rather series, but it was so much fun to pull this back out with you guys. Tell me what are you rathering? Did you get the same thing so you could try them head to head or do you have another one in there that you would want to just add your own little spin to and which one are you preferring? I love to hear that kind of stuff from you guys and I thought this was just fun to bring out. Tell me if you'd like to see more videos like these again where I'm kind of pulling out some of my series videos. I just haven't done these in a while and it's so much fun just to kind of like sit down and chat on about some makeup with my friends. Thank you so much for watching. And if you happen to be new to my loud, weird, crazy, unique channel, hi, new friends. My name is Nicole. Check out some of the playlists and videos that are going to be recommended to you right after this because we could just continue the fun all day long. And I hope you click that subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on my upcoming videos. I have more BoxyCharm videos coming this month. I'm still waiting for my paid for boxes. Bye friends.